Hey, good morning, Jesus is Lord. Yes, sir, the word works. Miracle action, multiplication. God don't deal in additions. He deals in multiplication. What are you doing? I'm trying to get that ant off my Bible. Don't mess with my Bible. Put the word first place in your life. They came to hear Jesus pressed in on him. He asked the disciples to loan him the boat. So he gets out there and he says, now cast your nets over to the other side for a draught or a huge catch. Now, this is the way they made their living. And they had never had to cast out into the deep fisher in the shallow water. But I have to go back and read this in verse um, 5. No, verse 6. And when they had this done, you see, they did their part first. You don't go to a pot belly stove. Now, I know a lot of you live in the city and not in the, in the country, and so you kind of got to get a mental picture of this. A pot belly stove, big old pot belly stove like we had years ago. You don't go to the stove and say, get hot and give me some heat here in this living room, and I'll put some wood in you. No, 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 no. You, you put the wood in there. You light the kindling first, and that wood gets to go in the stove put out heat. Well, you got to do your part first. Now, if you haven't sown seed then you don't have a place that you can harvest that seed that was sown. So when they had this done, then they began to get a load that was so big that they couldn't get the harvest. They had to share it with the other people. Now watch this. I call this the miracle action, miracle action of the Word of God. It says that two boats were sinking under the load of the miracle that God's Word performed in their life. I've told you this a couple of days, but I want to go back to it. One of three possibilities here. Either Jesus' word created the fish right there, and they just got created in the nets. Or two, um, when he said that, the fish from all over the rest of the sea out there, the Lake Gennesaret comes swimming to that area in obedience to the word. I like that one. Or number three, Jesus knew where the fish was. Any one of those threes works. It's still a miracle of God. Because Peter had said, we toiled all night. We worked all night. We ain't caught a thing. And we've, we've taken nothing. Now, they're washing their nets up on the bank, and the only net they had was the old rotten, dirty net that was in the, in the boat. And so that's what they cast out. And their old rotten, dirty, half-broken net or their partial obedience didn't stop the miracle action of the Word of God. Got to close my Bible. The wind's carried away. So watch this. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that. That won't keep God's Word from working for me. So I want to go back to number two here, was when Jesus said that, those fish come swimming from all over the lake to jump in the nets in obedience to God's word. So when I say, I have given, Luke 6, 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. So when I say, I have given, and I've been giving for, you know, over 50 years here. <clears throat> I mean, the first year we were married, I got married at the young tender age of 18. My wife was a good Baptist. Pat was a good Baptist. I was raised a Methodist, and I didn't know a thing about the Bible. Well, the first Sunday that we went to church after we got married, we got married in August, and then we started college in September. Well, the first thing we did was go down to a church, um, you know, the first week that we uh, were in school. In fact, we, we went to a church on our honeymoon. I mean, you know, I, that's, that's just always been what we did. Well, the first Sunday we're going to church, Pat said, um, did you bring your tithe? I said, bring what? She said, well, did you bring your tithe? I said, what? She said, well, you got to bring your tithe to the Lord. I said, what is that? She said, 10% of our income have to give it to the church so that we can be blessed of God. I said, you crazy. <laughs> and I didn't know nothing, but I said, okay, that's fine with me. And so, you know, 53 years later, I'm still tithing and I'm still being blessed. Just like I was blessed that first, you know, I didn't have a job, but after we brought our tithe to the Lord that week, I got a job and she got a job and we're both students and, and we've eaten well ever since, raised four children, 11 grandchildren, the blessings of God's overtaken us, but not just barely enough to get by. This was not just barely enough to get by. It was a huge miracle. Well, I'm believing God for a huge miracle. Miracle. I mean, I'm boy, I've got so many things I'm believing for. You know, it, it'd blow your mind if you knew what I was believing for. You know, jet airplanes, new cars, better house, big house. Listen, and I'm a blessed man. I am so blessed that I have to work at, you know, knowing what to do with my extra money because I got plenty of it. Listen to me now, but I'm not satisfied with that. I'm never satisfied till I get the full harvest. Ah, I thought I'd finish today. Get the full harvest. You see, nowadays, 
When a farmer goes out and gets his cotton out of the field or his soybeans in the field, he harvests that, he sells that, he spends the money, but then he goes back a couple of weeks later and cuts off the stalk and sells the fodder, they call it here. Sells the stalk and makes money on that. A chicken farmer, he sells the chickens and or the eggs, but now he sells the manure too. I mean, that's big bucks. They take that stuff. I don't know what they do with it, but they use it. They don't just throw it away. So get all your harvest. Don't let the devil talk you out of some of it. Get it all. Let me go back to this thing. Miracle action. Big, huge miracle. Get a picture of this. Their boats are sinking because of the blessings of God. Well, I believe your bank accounts are so overflowing with the blessings of God and that your house is so full of the blessings of God that you don't know what to do. Blessings. Blessings. Abundance. God can do, watch, exceeding, abundantly, above. <laughs> All I can ask or think, and boy, I can ask and think some big, big things. I mean, you know, some of the things I'm believing for, we're, whew, man, they're so big um, that sometimes I even have a tendency to want to stumble over. I'm talking about, you know, $50 million airplane here. Hey, how's God going to do that? He already created it. It's out there somewhere, and with that, I have to believe God for bukus of money to maintain that thing, put fuel in it, and travel all over the world, tell people about the love of God. Hey, saints, be blessed today. Don't limit God. Oh, I opened another door. The Bible says that they, uh, in Psalm 72 or 78, that they provoked God because they didn't believe him for his abundance. The children of Israel provoked God because they didn't believe for his abundance. Don't do that. I mean, they came out with all the gold and the silver and the jewels, and there wasn't one sick among them, but they believed, they, they provoked God because they didn't believe him for his supply and his abundance. I'm not going to do that, dear Lord. I believe the abundance of God overtakes you, and it's a mighty miracle of God, saints, and that you're so blessed you don't know what to do with it all. So until I'm with you tomorrow, hey, remember, Jesus is Lord. Thank God the word works.